Mister! He hasn't started yet. Shh. Any minute now. Shh. Julian, drop the curtains. Ladies and gentlemen, Frankie Bryce. McClintock, something in your eye. Only a tear, Hamish, only a tear. You know, I thought I had a hard life until I met that poor boy. When my life has been full of good fortune compared with the life and times of blind boy Tusker Grey. Blind boy? He was an orphan, Hamish. He was raised in a hole. He had to endure a life of pain and desertion. When people came for children, to take them for their own, he always took some other child, and I was left alone. Those were his very words, Hamish. Left alone, eh? Please sing along a Hamish, eh, Mr. McClintock? No people come for children. To take them for their own. But they always seem to pass me by. And I am left alone. Now I know that they would take me. But when they see I'm blind, and you go. They always take some other child, and I am left behind. That's nobody's child, him. Did blind boy Tusker Grey have a ticket? Hey, you! Come back here, you wee toe rag! Who? Me? Ah, you're right, Rory. Twenty-six years, man. Twenty-six years of eating humble pie and watching a Dunbracken boy walk off with a Willie McGraw Memorial Trophy. Twenty-six years watching the regulars at the Dunbracken Arms walk off with the annual wager. But not this year, boy. This year it's our turn. <laughs> I think you and I should have a wee chat. About what? About the kind of low life that goes around pretending to be blind just so he can dodge his train fare. Light Nuppy. What's his name? I don't mind his name. What an inspector I come on? You don't have a ticket. Mr McClintock could have been signing on come Monday. You think of that? What if, what if? You know, thanks to me, that guy was feeling good about himself. He was enjoying that warm glow you get when you help the less fortunate. Then you go and spoil it for him. Me? Well, I spoiled it for him. I'm not the one going around pretending to be blind. Take it easy, you're hurt my ears. I'll be kicking your backside in a minute if you get any more of your cheek. It was out of order, pal. It was offensive. Offensive to who? To blind people. How are they going to know what I'm doing if they're blind, pal? Well, somebody might tell them. This is a small village. Something like that can, you know... But that's, that's, that's not the issue, is it? I mean, it's the ethics of the thing. That's the point. Look, you caught me fair and square. So I'd have tossed me in the jug. I let it rest. But spell me the sermon. Because, frankly... You're not very good at it. Well, it is still an option, you know. The jug. Unless I get your word, there's no more blind boy Tusker Grey. Solemn promise. OK? OK. His name's Jog. Hello, 
Georgie. Thanks for coming up to us. This is the best day ever, Lachie. I'm going to sing for Loch Do and Northern. Just as long as you win for Loch Do and Northern. Now, come on out. There's someone here to see you. Who? Hello, Frankie. Tosca! Tosca! Nobody said you were coming. Not a word. Not a dicky bird. Who won last time out? Me. Double or quits? Post office on the corner. On. Go! Go! Joke. Thanks for watching them, Hamish. He must have been very impressed to get picked up in the police van. Uh, no. I don't think I was that much but impressed, that kid. How's you going at the school? We'll put it this way. If we don't beat them back in this year, we'll never beat them. Frankie's a real surprise talent. And Esme's done a fantastic job on him. Right, hey, Jock. Who won? A draw, I'd say. Come on, let's get Thomas inside. Ladies and gentlemen, was the honey sweet voice of young Frank Bryce. Mm. Discovered and trained by our own delectable Esme here. Mm. To represent us against Dumbracken for the Willie McGraw Memorial Trophy. So, what did you think of him? Well, I think I'll have a ten on him. Ten to him. Ten to the door. Uh, Twenty to you, Steve. Ten of a Duncan. Maggie, five of a Duncan. Maggie, five of a well, there's something bothering you. I can tell. Have you heard from Isabel or something? No, no, it's not that. It's a wee pal of Frankie's, that Tusker. Something all right with the boy, John. What do you mean? I called him up to a bit of mischief. I came the heavy copper. He acted like he couldn't care less. Well, maybe he could see through your act. I don't know. Maybe I'm losing my touch. Well, while you ponder on that, I'll go and get the bets on. Here, John. Stick a tenner on for me, yeah? Sorry I'm late. How'd it go? Oh, fine. You know. Yes. Business, Mr McCree? Yes. So who's off the tough, then? What? Who's dead? Oh, uh, Colonel McGregor, as a matter of fact. The McGregors are a prominent family in the area, Thomas. Minor aristocracy. Oh, that reminds me. I've asked Hamish to get me some special cones for the street for the Colonel's final journey. Bound to be a big turnout. Well, he's a brilliant undertaker, Tusker. Every funeral is planned like a military operation. I mean, the bereaved just worship him. Isn't that right, Auntie Jean? That's right. There's more than the bereaved worship Lachie McRae. That's the downside of this setup. I mean, every night you have to sit in the middle of that romantic cross dot and blown kisses. Well, turn your stomach. Frankie. Sorry. I was thinking, Frankie. What? Do you think you could stop calling me Tusker? Find it kinda. Juvenile. Sure. From here on, it's Tommy. I understand your predicament perfectly, Thomas. You see, I'm known locally as Lackey Junior, a title that is wholly at odds with my social position. What position's that, Mr McRae? Well, local undertaker. That's funny. I've never thought as an undertaker as having, well, a position. I always thought of it as a creepy job that was tailor-made for, well, creeps. <laughs> Thomas! I'm kidding you on, right, Tommy? No, I'm serious. Dead serious. Oh, he's kidding you on. <laughs> I'm kidding you on, isn't he? Oh. Well, 
Mr. Loch Doomen come to part with some of their money? <laughs> Ignore him. Did I tell you I had a nightmare last night, Lachlan? Well, you never said, John. No? Well, I was standing on a cliff, and this bus came careering towards me. All the passengers were Dunbracken men. And as I watched, the whole bus went straight over the edge. Shut up. A busload of Dunbracken men going over a cliff? You call that a nightmare? Oh, it was. There were two empty seats. Uh, 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 a little bit of respect for the law, gents, if you don't mind. They got on with this or I'm out of here. We've come for the Willie McGraw trophy since it's our turn to exhibit it before the competition. Oh! And to let you know that the Stag Bar wants to put £336 on our boy winning the competition. If you good people are able to match that. Oh, we'll match it, Hamish. And here's the trophy. 336, eh? Uh, 336. Just to help you uh, conceptualise that, Black Bob. It's the same as all the toes on 28 men. That can't be right, Lachlan. That would mean that every man would have to have 12 toes. Oh, I was thinking of 28 Dunbracken men, TV, John. Oh, I rightly know. I was forgetting about the effects of the old limited gene pool. OK, this is going to be kept in the stag bar in its usual place. And once you're able to raise the money... OK. I'll bring it round personally myself, Hamish. Thank you. Don't wonder. This is a recording of young Frankie Bryce, our boy in the competition. Thought you might like a wee listen. <laughs> After you, TV John. Harry, gents. How did he know you had hay fever? I didn't know you could sing. There's judges that come up for Inverness, and hundreds of people come here to hear it. Hunters? I mean, I have to wear a Highland kilt. This guy I'm up against, Brainy Balfour, he's won the contest for the last two years. But no this time, Tommy, cos I'm going to win it. I mean, it's my way of saying thank you to the villagers for treating me so nice. As I said, it's a big deal, really. Sounds like a load of tosh to me. Well, maybe. But from my point of view, it's important. And as for that lackey, Frankie, talk about a tubey position in the community. How'd you put up with that stuff? The man's a ghoul, that's what he is. Lackey's one of the best people I've ever met, Tommy. But since you don't really know him, Guess you're entitled to your wrong opinion. Frankie, if somebody called a friend of mine a tube, I'd take exception. Take exception? What is this? You're my best pal. You can say what you like, even if it's something I don't agree with. Tusker, what's wrong? Do you really want to know? Sure I do. You owe me a quid. Go. That is a fine singer they have this year. Who did McCray say it was? Alfie! Frankie Bryce. He's from Glasgow. From Glasgow? Are you sure? I'm sure. Oh, something wrong, Harry? Oh, there's something wrong, all right, Black Bob. But only if you're a Loch Do or nothing, man. This is going to be the easiest money we've ever made. So come on! Stomp up! Would you turn that off, boy? Hamish! Hey, Mike, Bob. I told you you were coming and I came in with you. Oh, there's no need, Hamish. But they're all in deep shock, Hamish. Too numb to be of any trouble. Come on, boy.
Okay, what's up? Harry Balfour brought down Bracken's money round. So what's the problem? They've doubled it. They also brought a copy of the rules pertaining to the Willie McGraw singing competition. What rules? Ones that say the competitors must be natives of the village they represent. Frank, he's not eligible, Hamish. Being from Glasgow. Well, don't anyone think to check this out? We didn't even know there were any rules, Hamish. It would seem that Umbracken men aren't quite as retarded as we thought. What's the right There's nothing we can do. Esme says there's no time to get a substitute ready. It'll be a walkover, Hamish. And the Dumbracken men walk away with our money. Wait a minute. What is it, dearest? Oh, I think there's something here we might be able to use. Rule eight. Rule eight? Yes. Oh, apparently Willie McGraw was keen for entrance to be more than just kilt swinging himbos with nice voices. Spit it out, dearest. Well, according to rule eight, boys putting themselves forward for the trophy were meant to be well-rounded lads who, in addition to possessing a good singing voice, should be of excellent character and be capable of displaying some depth of intellect. Some depth of intellect? A young Alfie Balfour. Uh, he's got the intellectual depth of a blue bottle. <laughs> I'd say there has to be room for negotiation on these rules. A trade-off, maybe. Would you hold on? Quiet out there! Yes, I can see your rule eight, Meldrum, so what's the point? I see. No, there'll be no objections from us, Meldrum. Not since it's in the rules. What is it? They have found a substitute. Ah. But they want to incorporate a general knowledge quiz into the competition. Any boy failing to score 50% will be inedible. Can they do that? Oh, they can do that, Black Pope. General knowledge. Has anyone got a book? There you are, Esme. It's on the house. Oh, of course, I did play a substantial part in the plan too, Barney. <coughs> so you did. But will it work? <laughs> it's got to work. Right. What do you call it when a shadow passes across the sun? We call it nighttime. Correct! No, eh? That's not correct. An eclipse. You call it an eclipse? Uh, an, an eclipse. Right. Next question. What sport do you associate with cows? Jumping over the moon. Cows. C-O-W-E-S, the Isle of Wight. Sailing! Oh, I'm tired. My brain's sore and I'm tired. I want to go to bed. No. You are not going to bed until you've answered one question. Just one right answer. Now, there was a prince that was known as the Young Pretender. He led a Jacobite rebellion in 1745. What was his name? For the love of God, what was his name? It was... Yes. It was... Paul... Bo. 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 Prince Bobo. What? That's what you said. No. Bonnie Prince Charlie. Bonnie. No, Bobo. I've never heard of a Prince Bobo. No one is called Bobo. No one. Yeah, God. <laughs> Hello? 
Hi, Mr. Balfour. That's very generous of you. And of course we agree. Frankie can sing in the competition if we drop the general knowledge rule. Do you like Yant Macbeth? Yep. I think he's an umpty. What'd you say to that? I told you, you're entitled to your own opinion, even if it's wrong. Frankie, I've come up with this great scam. It's like, you get it to take a rise out of the whole world. You in on it? What do you want to take a rise out of the whole world for? I've got my reasons. So what'd you say? Sounds interesting. Tomorrow then. Hello, Lucky. Hi. How many cars are we expecting? Oh, it doesn't go upwards, Hamish. Well, that should just about do it. Give us a shout if you need any more. Oh, thanks, Hamish. Oh, my daddy mentioned this business about Frankie in the singing contest. Oh, thank God for the late, eh? Hiya. I just hope that Dumbrack and crew don't come up with any other impediment. Oh, no way. And through the rails are fine too, so nothing can go wrong. Give you the blind boy, Frankie. What are you doing? Blind and homeless! Blind and Just homeless! Go. Stop this! This is wrong! Thank you, sir. Or madam. See? He didn't seem to mind. <sighs> blind and homeless! Blind and homeless! Tusker, stop this! It stinks! Shut up, right? Just shut up! If you've not got a bottle, then beat it! Are you? Blind and oh, homeless! No, Tusker, it's Hamish! So what? And I told you, it's not Tusker, it's Tommy. Blind and homeless! Hey, I know warned you about this. What have I told you? You're clearing my pitch, Constable. What the hell's going on here? Listen, you, you made me a promise. You gave me your word. I had my fingers crossed. Promises don't count when you give them with crossed fingers. Every dimwit knows that. Blind and homeless! Listen, son, you better stop this right now or I'm going to lose my patience with you. You do what he says or you're out of my house and you're on your way home, I swear it. Are you getting this? They're ganging up on me. So who are you with? I said, who are you with, Frankie? I'm with you, Tommy. Will you let them take me away? If you go, I go. I'm sorry about this, Lachie, but that's the way it is. I was part of this too, Hamish. If you left Tommy, you have to leave me. I'm going home. Come on, Tommy. I said, come on, Tommy! Frankie's no part of this. Kids playing the loyalty card.
take your eight, pal. This is my place. Who are you? Name's Tommy Gray. Can I have one? Sure. I'm Alfie Balfour. Ah, the singer. How do you know that? I'm a friend of Frankie Bryce. Hope that's OK. No problem. You can tell him I think he'll win, by the way. You can tell him I don't give him monkeys because I've already won twice before and it's not worth the hassle. I'll tell him. Can I have a shot? There you go. Look out there! Goodness Speed here, sorry. And don't forget this lovely wedge, my darling. <laughs> Have you thought about what you're going to do with your winnings? Something uh, sheer, I thought. What about you? Yeah, I've been uh, considering a radical change in the underwear department myself. You mean out with the boxer shorts at last? And in with the pink satin pouch. Just like you've always wanted. Hmm. Be still, my beating heart. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Meldrum. Ah, <laughs> Frankie. <laughs> just having a wee uh, joke here with Mrs. Meldrum. <laughs> Who's just finished polishing the Willie McGraw trophy for the umpteenth time. Seeing as how it's going to be up on the shelf there for a year. I'll try my best, Agnes. My very best. That's all anyone can ask, young Frankie. No. What can I get you? A coke? No, thanks. I was looking for the dock. Over there, son. Thanks. <clears throat> Is that, um? What? Oh, no, 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 no. You don't, uh... Nah. Good. <clears throat> So what can I do for you? What I want to know, Doc, is can medicine change people? I mean, my friend Tusker, Tommy, hmm? it's just not been the same person. It's been Jekyll and Hyde with him. It's possible. What kind of medicine is he taking? I wrote it down. No, don't know it. You wouldn't have to know who his doctor is, would you? Sure, same one I had. Then write that down too, and I'll see if I can contact him. You're a gent, Doc. So, uh, where are the boys then? Oh, sleeping in. Oh, so it's uh, just you and me then? Of course it's just you and me. Just you and me, right? <laughs> Just you and me. Well, you can bring it into me then. and the money, Hamish. Whoever it was came in through the window in the gent's toilet. And I think they slipped the latch with that. I found it outside. Where's Barney? Well, as far as he's concerned, this is the work of the Dumbracken crew. 
He said he was going to raise an army to go over there. I can't see this belonging to a Dunbracken man, Hamish. All these blades would only confuse them. Yeah, a Dunbracken man wouldn't have to search for the trophy either, would he? When we fell into Balfour's harem. My harem? What are you insinuating, Meldrum? Uh, I think you'd better get yourselves cleaned up and then we can see what's what around here. Uh, would you fancy a glass of lemonade or something like this? Only if you have one yourself, John. I think I might risk a pint of Balfour's watery beer. Oh, well, I'd better go ahead. Make sure the glasses are clean. There is no watery beer in my pub! And there are no dirty glasses! Oh, come on and get cleaned up, like John said. This will kill me when she sees the state of me. She says I've got skin like a peach. That's what thumbs are on, she says. Now look at me. <laughs> Never seen this before? That's mine. Tommy gave it to me. Hamish, Frankie didn't take the money. Why would he do that? You know him. He went out late last night. Thought I was asleep. When he came back, I seen him put something in his drawer. Tosca! You're a liar. Thomas, what are you saying? Do you mind if I look inside the drawer? Look all you want. It's the bottom drawer, Hamish. <laughs> Auntie Jean, I never took it. Like it, I swear. For God's sake, Hamish. Jean said it. You know the boy. I know. And I know he didn't take this. Whoever broke into the hotel had to search the lounge bar first. Frankie wouldn't do that. He knew exactly where the trophy was. In fact, I doubt there's a person in the entire district who wouldn't know exactly where the trophy was. Whoever broke in was a stranger. A stranger that could get close enough to Frankie to steal his pen knife. Do you mind if I look in your things, Sam? These things are over here, Hamish. Tusker! Told you. It's not Tusker, it's Tommy. Get him out of here, please, Hamish. I told everything I did to you. Can I get the next train? Yeah, this one at five. Come on, I'll take you to the station. No, I don't want anybody with me, Jean. Nice bit of police work, that, Hamish. Aye. How come I don't feel that pleased with myself, then? Something stinks here. The story is that young Bryce is off the hook because you say the stag bar was turned over by a stranger, someone who didn't know where to find the trophy. That's right, Thomas Gray. Hm. Tell him, boy. The other boy, Tommy. He knew where the trophy's kept. He asked me and I told him. Then why in God's name did he search the place, Hamish? 
Maybe young Frankie did the deed himself and then faked the search to throw suspicion on this other boy. Well, that's my hypotenuse. Rubbish. Hey, miss? No, no, Doc, I'm busy. Tusker Grey, is he here? What do you want him for? Just uh, treat him carefully, Hamish. Why? That boy is seriously ill. I made a call to his doctor. Young Frankie was concerned about him. It's doubtful whether that boy will see his 18th birthday. No. My thoughts exactly. Hamish? On the basis of what you just told me, I could be about to screw up big time. So if you're lying, your singing days are over. I'm telling the truth. Spoke to young Alfie Balfour. Who's he? You know who he is. You know, it doesn't really add up, does it? You knew exactly where the money was because Alfie told you. Yet you still searched the lounge bar. I never took anything. He just searched, just left things lying around for me to find and come over all policeman-like. That's what you did, isn't it? You left me a clue. You exposed yourself as a thief. Worse, you exposed yourself as a thief that they try and shift the blame on his best pal. I know you're ill, Thomas. I know how ill. And I think you know as well, is that right? How'd you find out with that kind of thing? You listen at the door. You hear them crying. Well, your mum and dad? That's right. Listen, if I promise not to breathe a word about this, do you think you could maybe, um, tell me the truth? Solemn promise? Absolutely. You think that, uh, when the time comes, it's going to be easier in Frankie if he hates you, is that what you think? I tried to turn them against me, but make them call me Tommy. Then I was bad mouth from Mr. McCrae. Then you. Next it was a begging scam. But nothing worked. So I did the robbery. And you intend doing the same thing to your parents, make them hate you? Worked here, didn't You know, if you don't mind me saying, I don't think your plan really makes an awful lot of sense. I mean, you think Frankie's walking about just now, hating your guts. Well, for my money, he's gonna be pretty hot. Wondering what he did to deserve this. Feeling all the things that you thought you were gonna spare him. But bad as that is, Frankie's not the real worry here. The worry's your parents. If you do this thing, you're gonna destroy them. Sure as you and me are standing here.
Ich ruf mal Jenny. So, it's you, is it? Blind boy Tusker Grey himself. Well, well, well. Sorry about that. And so you should be. Well, get on if you're getting on. I'm not going to bite you. I think I'll stay here a wee while longer, Mr McClintock. As you wish. Run thing. Ah, oh, it was close. But you did it. Thank you. What an idiot you are, Tosca. You promised. It's in the bag.